All right. Um, thank you, panelists. Those were uh, a lot of good ideas and a lot has clearly been happening. Uh, I want to give a few moments for questions from our audience. What questions do you all have? Oh, more. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. We need, we need. I'm just running up. <laughs> No, it's a great, great panel, and I, I appreciate everything that, that that all of you do. Um, you know, John, you mentioned, is there anything we could do, you know, a, a better investment than this? Uh, there are people in the transportation space that would say, build sidewalks, mm. build protected bike lanes. There are people who would say, provide for better rural and remote emergency response. There's There's the whole spectrum of stuff that's in the safe systems approach that we need to talk about. And, you know, we, we've talked about NHTSA and the lack of, you know, some, some conversation about the auto side of this vehicle to infrastructure conversation. But one thing that NHTSA does do is gives us the cost of inaction. You know, when you add all the DOT budgets up, the 52 of us, it's about $200 billion a year. But according to NHTSA, the societal cost of crashes in the United States is $1.4 trillion a year. And so the second thing that we need is a dedicated source of funding to address this because we're being set up to compete with people that want sidewalks and people that want protected bike lanes and people that want to invest in overburdened communities and people that want to invest in state of good repair and the rest of that. So what can we do as a uh, or ITS America, I'm past chair there, but what can we do to get on board that more holistic yes in, and all in approach to safety and be good partners to people who have other dogs in this hunt so that they come on board with us because you know by pushing for our niche of this our slice of the pie everybody else we, we need to be pushing to to have a, a bigger pie there so what would you recommend in terms of just being a little more holistic about our approach and putting it as king said putting it in a context of overall transportation investment thanks I think those are ex those are excellent points, and um, my reference was was primarily into the vehicle realm, as you know, right? I, I wasn't thinking about it um, systemically, but um, I completely agree with you that a dedicated source of funding would would certainly help um, to to deploy this. And the sense that I got from the discussions that I mentioned we've been having is that um, Congress would be willing to do it, but they want to see the the fact base. You know, we 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 talk about this, and although there've been pilot studies and there, there's been a, a little bit of work, we need to demonstrate the real benefit of this. And I don't think there'll be a hesitancy to fund it. As as Tim said, once um, residents and and citizens realize what the benefits are, they'll demand this. They'll demand this in their local communities. You know, and ultimately it'll trump right up to uh, Congress, and they'll have to fund wide scale. And, uh, efforts as well as as a as a dedicated pot for this, but I think the best way to to start this and again quoting Shailen, you know nothing uh, breeds success than better than success. We have to start deploying and showing success stories to make that case. We need a fact base to bring back and say, see what it does, see the lives that it saves, see what part of this 1.4 trillion we're we're trying to affect, um, and and come back to them with with real hard data. Uh, thanks, everybody. My name's Corey. Um, I'm with a company called Hoss Alert. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask about the deployment plan and where it's focused with DOTs. I see a lot of confusion from state DOTs not understanding uh, what a deployment plan is or looks like or what technologies count for it. Uh, yesterday, I stopped by a Grapevine uh, Fire Department and talked with Chief Brown, and he's deployed V2X using LTE networks and his entire fire department fleet. Uh, those folks have incredibly dangerous jobs. And so our first responders, uh, school bus operators, utility operators, tow trucks, uh, police, EMS, you name it, they're all already deploying V2X using LTE. And they feel like, well, when we hear our state DOT is telling us we need to, to wait and we can't deploy V2X technology because there's some waiver thing or 
Uh, my DOT wants to focus on a connected corridor, so I can't actually deploy any of this and, until they look at it and the fire chiefs start buying V2X and deploying it themselves. The utility workers start buying V2X and putting it on their own vehicles. So now we're in this, in this stage where all of the technology companies that have been using LTE to deploy V2X is the largest connected deployment of V2X in this entire country, if not arguably the world. So the, the, whenever we talk about deployment plans, whenever we talk about we have to launch, we have to start now, folks are looking back going, my state already deployed. We've, we've already been using V2X over LTE and it's causing, it causes a lot of confusion. And we, we've been celebrating the waivers, which I think is a great thing. Um, but then you have car companies like Stellantis that had said, hey, we're, we all heard them on the panel this week saying, we're taking basic safety messages over LTE today, but really there hasn't been much attention placed on that. So I think here's where, you know, there's all this focus around, we have to deploy, we have to start today. It's important we deploy. And if V2X truly means saving lives, no matter what the technology is, there's a lot of folks saying, I don't know what they're talking about. We've already started this in thousands of agencies. So what are some things that you would add for the folks to take back? to their city DOTs, to their state DOTs, and the folks on the ground that are that have to implement these solutions so that they can understand they don't have to wait. They can start with cellular and move into, you know, a 30 megahertz as the waivers are deployed. Because uh, my fear would be people just wait, and then we wait, and then we wait, and then we wait, and we'll wind up in the same place we were 10 years ago. And I will take a first cut at that one. Um, we are here today to talk about how to create a deployment plan for the uh, interoperable connectivity within the 30 megahertz of spectrum. Um, and we still very much believe in other forms of connectivity. And so perhaps we need to work on messaging, but the challenge is that you can already do LTE communications today. You don't need a deployment plan, but we do need one to keep us very focused on how we do the crash avoidance safety applications that are made possible only through the uh, 30 megahertz of spectrum that we have. And so uh, we, we, we need to focus on that and uh, we don't wanna create confusion. And so if you're hearing that, that's an important message that, that we need to work on our messaging on that. Uh, but we also need this, this deployment plan focused on the spectrum. Sure. And I, I think that's part of the confusion for a lot of folks in the room that we've heard at ITS Americas over the last few days is that folks don't believe that the deployment plan is just about the 30 megahertz. Hmm. I think that that's, that's the biggest confusion, right? Is we keep saying that, but it, it's not. Right, and so we want to deploy V2X to save lives out on the road for those that are most vulnerable starting first. And so there is a plan and there is technology doing that, but I think not going to get answered in this question, but I think part one of the things we need to focus on as an industry as a whole is clarifying that, that communication so that folks know the deployment plan is not just a deployment plan for 30 megahertz at all. It means any technologies that we can deploy to further V2X for safety but there's still a lot of confusion, not just with the DOTs and the agencies and the IOOs, but even clearly with the folks just in this room. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for bringing up the topic. Good morning. My name is uh, Jovan Zagaitz. I happily retired from Ford Motor Company as well, following John's lead. <laughs> he did it before me, and I see how happy he was. So um, I spent the last. Uh, five years, uh, six years at Ford, um, leading a team that was doing V2X. Um, it's really the right fight to be in. And I want to start by thanking you as DOT and all of these organizations for all of the stuff that you have done over the last few years to make that happen. To finally, see the movement forward. Um, after five years of glut, I think we are, we, we are finally have the, the, the movement forward. Um, I'm here you're gonna, today. Uh, you're not going to go back to work, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I am here on behalf of Audi. Um, I'm helping. Uh, I'm helping them with the, the work that they're doing in this space. Um, so my question to you uh, is: uh, um, in the in your role as cat herders, um, I see all these organizations here um, representing the automotive, representing the infrastructure owners and operators. We heard a lot about vulnerable road users today. So I'm thinking uh, bike OEMs, for example, and the likes of that. 
who of all of you is going to raise their hand and say, we're going to include them in our discussions because they need to be included. <laughs> I was going to suggest that you can raise your hand. I would have done that. Um, I think it's very important that they have a voice in this discussion. There's a, I, I believe that there's a huge opportunity that we can help that community with the technology that has evolved to the point where these devices can be um, pretty much made available on scooters and bikes on all up on things that we were not thinking 20 years ago when this whole thing was started so tim yeah i i couldn't agree more i think um its america we are a big tent that's one of the benefits for our organization um is we are able to welcome in really any stakeholder group from any industry segment <clears throat> um one of the things that we've done uh, over the last many years is develop a um a stable of organizations that we can uh, partner with and that we can call on uh, to express their support for 5.9 gigahertz band and VDAC services, which includes uh, the Bike League um, as well as other vulnerable road user uh, representative organizations, um, in addition to uh, EMS providers and um, the, the uh, fire chiefs and uh, numerous others, MAD, numerous other organizations. And we absolutely uh, are going to look to involve them in the conversation as we look towards deployment. And a lot of the planning and engineering that's done down at the local level, um, uh, a lot of that does flow through a lot of our members as well at ITE. And there's a lot of conversation about how can we improve safety uh, as well as accessibility for uh, um, a lot of the vulnerable road users. Uh, integrating V2X as one of those safety solutions is certainly on our mind and part of our mission as well, because there's a lot of different ways we can improve safety. Um, and this is a big one of them. And I want to add on to what Steve just said, because Federal Highways, Shailen Bad as administrator, has really shown a light on the VRU issue. Yeah. And the states are working together with uh, Federal Highways on that. So it's V2X is one piece of solving that uh, safety issue for VRUs. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for all of that. And I'm, I'm really hoping that at the end of the day, we're going to have part of the implementation plan really addressing the next steps of how we get that going. Hi, I'm gonna have to bend down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Hanif Datu. I'm with uh, TELUS, who's a wireless operator. We're also an investor in a road operator. So we're pretty weird. Um, uh, that has tagged so, really weird. So I, so I actually see both ends of it. Uh, when we're dealing with, as a wireless operator, we're all looking at six gigahertz and thinking about the, that is the last frontier for contiguous spectrum. So it's super important to us. Then I look at the auto manufacturers and the, the challenges that they have. And we're, we're sitting here looking at how do we deploy capital? Yeah. And the core issue, I think, that could you could take from wireless land and put it into this area is really a reference architecture. That's what we need. Uh, we need to understand what are the cybersecurity parameters? What are the latency parameters? How do we leverage our assets that we have for mobile edge compute? How do we leverage, um, uh, you know, the configuration so that it diminishes the risk profile that we're looking at so that we can put capital to work. We're ready to do so, but we just need a little help. Uh, and in terms of uh, at the public level, you know, I know as road operator, everyone's worried about their capital profile, their rate of return, um, and it's a fragmented industry. So you're gonna have to think through uh, how you satisfy that element as well. So, um, there's a lot of challenges, but I think start with the reference architecture. All right, thanks for your comment. Uh, go ahead. Hi, Kopa Sonina for my company. Still working though. This guy might be inspired me to retire, but it's not working yet. So anyways, uh, I, I think it, it strongly believe in the V2X safety and there's a kind of a new statement I'm carrying around saying it's like, you know, you need 360 vision to get to vision zero. Otherwise you cannot, right? That's the way I'm thinking about it. But one, from the conversations, like actually my questions kept changing. As I started moving, as you started answering them, my question kept changing as to what I really want to ask about. But the key thing I'm seeing about is, I think we are introducing confusion again at some point. 
in terms of the, hey, what does V2X mean? Is like a cellular or the CV2X or, right? It is just the same uh, PTSD that happened because of the DSRC and CV2X, right? To at least uh, the, some of the cities and other stuff. So I think one thing we do want to think about is, I know we are talking about bold, but it's not bold and beautiful, it's bold and meaningful, right? That's what we need to go after to say, what is that, what is the, uh, if you being bold, what, what is that gonna get? And that communication about how and what, right? How and how much in terms of the safety benefit, that part is missing in terms of communication or in terms of being able to look at our data, what we have, what has been done in corridors or something, and be able to translate that into a communicable information to the cities and the other DOTs and plus to the OEMs as well, right? Because there is no uh, answer or a number to hold on to say, okay, this is what a quantifiable value looks like for people. Okay, thank you. We, we are past our time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm going to ask all of you to be brief with your comments. I, I think I think that was a comment and not a question. It seemed like the, a comment. That's a comment and a question okay. is we do need to do something about it. And okay. are there any efforts towards that from ITSA or anyone else really? So. No, I think I think you were. I think the you know with the with the previous comments of what's happening in LTE, if you look at this holistically, the, there's an inventory that, that might not exist quite yet you know, a lot of these projects that are out there and, and collectively, how do you pool all of that together to make the case that I was referring to earlier? Yeah. Um, that that database, if you will, for lack of a better term, probably has to be created because we, we know about it in different areas. And if they're not at a state level, uh, you might not hear about it. If it's at a local municipal level that a fire chief is, is, is using this, you know, and, and right. there's a fact base there. Let's get it all together because I think it all helps the cause, whether it's LTE or or direct. Just as your, I'm sorry, John. Go ahead. No, I'm, I was done. Just as your question was evolving, the whole space is evolving. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Five, a few years ago, we didn't talk about edge computing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, and that changes what definitions are and what is appropriate for which media. Yeah. Right. And if we are not able to answer ourselves, I think cities are going to really struggle on that one, right? And um, the reason everyone is here today is to be able to contribute to the plan. So that's that what we're doing in the breakout session. So I hope you will continue to contribute there. Hello, I'm Randy Roebuck with Omnier. And thank you for holding the SCMS meeting on Wednesday night for um, security and certification. Um, in moving forward to VDEX, we put in a lot of money for the technology standards, where we know the technology, when communications is implemented properly, it works very well. And we said so we need to follow the standards. We need to put the tools in place to test it and get it done. There's a lot of effort going on for intersection verification. There's work going on at device level certification such as what Omniair does. And uh, we want to make sure the plan covers these tools and so we can put these things in confidently and they work. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, final word. Um, thank you very much. My name is Roger Mahler. I'm with AT&T. We've always looked at DSRC, originally when we started, now cv x the V2V and the V2I as complementary technologies, not competitive technologies. Now that we have lost so much of the spectrum in the V2V space, the ability to start and look at this and say, okay, what is most critical to use in the V2V space? Because it is absolutely critical and we must use it. We must start and use it now, but start and look at what are the pieces that we can start and offload because they're not mm -hmm. critical mm -hmm. and say, okay, they now become informational messages beyond the 300 meters out to 300 miles. And start to look at this, not so much as we do today, how do we handle this at a city level? Mm -hmm. This yeah. is a national discussion at the end of the day. It's not just moving inside the city, it's moving between cities and between states. Yeah. Uh, the gentleman in the previous one actually said, what do we do with the evacuations and that? And this is a critical piece. So how are you viewing this as we go forward in this discussion, not just leveraging complementary technologies, but extending it beyond the local space. 
Thank you. So I, I think one of the, to your, your earlier point, if you haven't uh, heard Jim Meisner's, he, he teased out a couple of times this week about the U.S. deploy, right? And, yes. and the efforts to, to try and say, uh, what does day one look like? What are the basic things that we have to start looking at and, and how can we collectively get behind that? In addition to use cases like intersections and things, but but how are we going to use that 30 megahertz most effectively yeah. uh, and build from there? So that's that's an effort that I would suggest if, if I can't recall if at t is involved in that one or not, but that you you do that. Uh, we actually have very close friendship with Jim Meisner. And Paul, um, <laughs> Everyone we've does. Actually, <laughs> no, we yeah. actually didn't ask to participate. Thank you. Actually, you gave a great segue to our next speakers. We, we also do, this is an area where we're also doing work and um, recognize that more work is needed. And the two people who can talk more about that and um, where we're going in this space are up next, John Harding and Govin Badakchak. Thank you very much.